So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here uh, with us. And it's kind of odd that we're in a place that has got birthday decorations and uh, soda, but I kind of like it. You know, we, we can uh, quench our thirst uh, while we talk about transit. And so my name is Clayton Clark, and I am the general manager for Green Mountain Transit. And I want to start today by thanking you for being here, because by being here and telling us uh, how transit is important to you, it helps us preserve this service. And so um, as you'll hear uh, um, in my presentation a little bit uh, later, everything you say is going to get packaged up and uh, pr provided to all of the decision makers uh, that are out there at the municipalities, at the state, at the governor's office um, that uh, would be making decisions about transit. And so you being here and telling us how important things are, uh, how important transit is, for you um, is really important. So <clears throat> I also want to start off by saying that I'm sorry that we're here. I am sorry that our financial situation uh, requires us to consider service reductions. Um, everybody that works at GMT, all of our uh, uh, commissioners on our board of commission, uh, board of commissioners, you know, they all come to us because they love transit they see the way transit is able to help uh, address myriad issues uh, in our communities. And so we see uh, service uh, reductions as not what we want. It's the opposite of what we want. And so I'm sorry that our situation requires us to consider uh, a contraction. I do want to spend a moment just letting folks know a little bit about uh, Green Mountain Transit. And so we're a municipality. So just like uh, the city or town that you live in in Vermont, um, we are a government function. And, um, and so all of our, our board members uh, on uh, uh, the board of commissioners are volunteers. Uh, they spend countless hours uh, volunteering to do the difficult job of managing uh, uh, Green Mountain Transit and its limited resources. And so I say that because I want to make sure people know that we are not a for-profit company. And so we are not doing service reductions because we're looking to maximize shareholder value. We're not looking to maximize profits. Uh, as, as a municipality, we just need to break even. That's, that is our financial goal. And, uh, um, and so I do want to recognize some folks that are uh, here. Um, uh, I want to recognize Ryan with the Teamsters. Uh, the Teamsters are the, uh, or a majority of our employees uh, are with the uh, uh, Teamsters unions, and we have three different unions for our uh, rural, urban driver, uh, rural and urban drivers. And I'm sorry if I'm so tongue-tied. This is the fifth, uh, uh, the fifth public meeting in, in uh, 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 the past few days, and I'm starting to get um, so that my ability to speak clearly is, is diminishing. Um, and so, uh, so Ryan is here. We have um, uh, Tracy, one of our drivers here, so I want to uh, recognize uh, their importance to us. I want to recognize uh, Jeremy's uh, importance to us. Jeremy is with VTrans. VTrans is a critical partner with us. Um, you know, one of the things that we're going to be doing is talking about our need for more money. But I want to recognize that the state of Vermont already invests more per capita into public transit than almost any other state. And so uh, we have to recognize that our friends at VTrans, um, you know, have been uh, very supportive of public transit. I want to uh, um, introduce a person who is extremely important in my life uh, because she's my boss. And that is Amy Brewer, who is the chair of our uh, board of Commissioners, and she's here, and uh, and so she'll be grading me. Uh, me so uh, please say nice things to her um, afterwards. And uh, and so Amy, thank you for being here. Um, and so I want to um, spend a few minutes to go over the broad uh, strokes of of uh, our service reduction plan, but I'm not going to go over all of the specifics because really tonight is about hearing from you. And I think it would just take too long to go over the, uh, all the ins and outs of it. And so I do want to let you kind of know that uh, how we developed the plan and that that is that we had uh, over 100 survey results uh, from riders, uh, from our municipal partners, uh, from our board members, and from employees. And, uh, uh, and these folks filled out, uh, filled out a transit survey 
where they uh, express their transit values, like what is the thing that's important uh, to them uh, when it comes to transit. And so in a nutshell, those surveys advised us that we should focus on local service over commuter service, we should focus on weekday service over weekend service, and we should not reduce service where it serves the most riders. So, so where public transit is working well, we should, we should not tinker with it too much. The flip side of that is that on runs that have the fewest riders, there's going to be uh, reductions and possibly eliminations. And that's where we really need to make sure that we hear from you uh, so that we know what the, what the impact would be. So the, the plan is laid out in four phases. The first phase is ongoing, and that includes transferring the 116 commuter to Tri-Valley Transit. And so right now, uh, there's four runs that are operated a day on the 116 commuter, and Tri-Valley Transit operates two of those runs, and Green Mountain Transit operates two of those runs. And so um, Heinsberg has decided that they would like to go with Tri-Valley Transit for all of the runs, and so they are departing GMT and they will be getting their service from uh, Tri-Valley Transit. That should be happening on October 1st with no real change uh, or degradation of service at all uh, for uh, riders. Um, we also made some reconfigurations to the neighborhood special routes that operate during the school year in Burlington. Um, again, there was no loss in service associated with those consolidations. Um, we're still covering the same geographic area, uh, and so that uh, so in that phase, uh, we're, we're not seeing a loss in service. The second phase could happen in November or December of this year. Um, this phase would eliminate the Jeffersonville commuter, uh, which is a commuter that connects uh, Jeffersonville to the downtown transit center. And we would also look to reduce Saturday service, uh, mostly in the evenings, but also potentially uh, eliminating Saturday service on the number 10. And so the number 10 is what connects uh, Essex Junction uh, to Williston. And so it goes from the Essex experience uh, around the uh, town of Essex uh, to, uh, to Walmart. The third phase would happen in February or March, and it would really focus on our commuter and link service. Uh, what we're proposing is to consolidate the St. Albans link and the Milton commuter into a single line. Um, and we're also looking at whether we should be reducing uh, the Montpelier link service. Uh, we, uh, most of our service has come back to its pre-ridership or pre-pandemic ridership levels, and we're finding that the link in the commuter service is, is the area that's lagging that's still about half of the ridership uh, of, of pre-pandemic, and, and we need to consider those service adjustments. The fourth phase uh, could happen in June of 2025. This is the worst part of the plan. This uh, is, the, is the part of the plan that focuses almost entirely on local service, and if it were to be enacted, um, there would be uh, an elimination of the eight, the 10, and the 11 routes. Um, and so that's, that's a, certainly a big deal. Um, one of the things that we know is that the number 10 and 11 has been identified in the past uh, by VTRANS as being an underperforming route. Um, it's underperforming in the sense that the cost per passenger is much higher than our other routes. Um, and so we know even if that uh, service is saved, we know that we need to make some modifications to it. Um, and I also want to let folks know that we are considering a change in the ADA fare. And so uh, when somebody uh, lives within three quarters of a mile of a uh, fixed uh, route bus line, um, and they have a disability that makes uh, using the fixed route uh, service uh, inappropriate, um, then uh, we contract out that ADA service through SSTA. It provides a door-to-door -door service, and, um, uh, and the fare right now is $3 uh, for that door-to-door uh, -door fare, and we would be looking to uh, increase that to, to 4 and we're almost done with me talking and getting to the part where um, I like, which is listening to you all. Um, and so I do want to make uh, one bit of good news to say about our uh, situation, and that that is that the plan that we are considering 
um, would uh, have $3 million worth of savings. Uh, the good news is, is that our current financial projections uh, for next year show that we only have about a gap of $2 million. And so uh, part of that is because our friends at VTrans uh, helped us identify an additional $700,000 worth of federal funds to draw down. Um, and we've also done some other cost cutting measures. And so the good news is, is that at, at this point in time, we know that we're not gonna have to implement the full uh, service reductions. And so your input is gonna be helping us and decide what, uh, uh, what amongst these potential reductions we're gonna need to keep and which ones uh, we're not. And so uh, now is the time where I'm gonna uh, basically sit down and listen to you uh, what I would say is, is that um, if we would ask people, because our, our friends with uh, Town Meeting TV are recording this, uh, so people who couldn't come here would be able to, to listen. Um, so uh, if you have a comment, uh, I, I can either bring the microphone to you um, or you can come up. If you don't want to be on TV, we totally understand that. And uh, just let us know and, and we'll make sure that the camera doesn't uh, come on you. Uh, uh, during your comments. So, whew, man, just like to get that out of the way so that I can, can hear what you have to say. And so, who would like to talk first about how this service reduction plan could impact them and what, uh, uh, and what you would like us to think about? Clayton, one thing, for folks, before you provide comments, if you could just say your name. Excellent. Uh, Absolutely. Thank you for that reminder, Chris, um, because as I mentioned, we are going to be documenting all of this and we want to know who uh, said what for our records. So, okay, who, I'll just ask, I know you close up. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're, uh -huh. so you're way over there. Okay. I don't, I don't do close ups. I'm just seeing the whole time you've been talking because I'm kind of shocked. Okay. So, so I think he's trying to say. You know, people aren't going to be able to see if your hair isn't perfect. Uh, I know mine never is, uh, much to my wife's dismay. And so, uh, and so, who would like to get us started? Excellent, excellent. And here, someone's got to start. Yes. Hi, I'm Charlene. I live in Williston. Um, I ride the number one to work. Um, I have been for the last few months, and it's been a really good experience. Um, I am really, I feel really lucky at this meeting because the cuts that have been proposed don't impact me, but it also feels like the correct thing to do to come and be a part of the discussion because I don't want to do the, you know, F you, I've got mine kind of thing. Um, I think the cuts, as I perceive them, have been really well thought out and make a lot of sense. Um, I think losing, for instance, the Jefferson commuter is really disappointing, but I also wonder if the town of Jeffersonville might want to pitch in a little bit if they want to keep that going. Um, but I think overall, they seem to make a lot of sense. I do think from riding the bus, we are incredibly lucky to have the bus service we have for such a small community. Um, but there is a lot of sense to be made for pulling in a little bit and focusing on making our local service that does get a lot of use a little bit better if we can do it. One of the things I think we need to do as a community, as a, as a bus route, is to attract not just the people who rely on the bus, but also people who have the luxury of taking the bus. And right now that is, I think, a really hard thing to do. And my own riding of the bus says to me that there aren't very many people in my position who have the luxury of riding the bus. And I think we need to do some more attracting of that. Absolutely. That's my comments. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome. Who would like to go next? And I'll bring this over to you. Thank you. I'm Deborah Clemmer, and I live in Burlington. And I've been riding the bus for two years, um, the Williston number one and the airport bus number 11. Um, I think we need to track. I have a car, but I choose to ride the bus a lot. And we need to capture people to get them all. all we have too many cars, especially in Burlington. I'm concerned about airport bus. I work at um, the Chittenden Clinic, which is on Dorset Street, and that's where people are going that have uh, opiate addictions. And ever since we started charging money, it's been a barrier for get people there. 
um, the people like me that can walk and have no problem, we tend to take Williston bus and walk from the mall because it runs every 20 minutes. The airport bus is only running every 45 minutes. But there are people at the clinic that can barely walk. So they have to take that airport bus. And there is no other bus going past that clinic. So that concerns me. And I know um, if the bus is like Saturday, I work every Saturday. I don't take the bus because it runs every 30 minutes. And if you got a car, like 20 minutes, okay, you'll wait. But 30 minutes, no. Um, you don't want to wait after you just get off work for 30 minutes for a bus to come. Um, but I'm really disappointed. I was hoping we would try to go with getting more people on the bus. And, and this, I think, the cuts, and I understand it's not the bus company's fault. Um, I wrote whoever, uh, the woman in the house that was the chair of the transportation, to say, let's not charge people to ride the bus. I can afford it, but a lot of people can't. Um, never got a response, and he, also to my local rep that was on the transportation committee. So I knew right there our legislators aren't, you know, if they're not responding to citizens sending them an email, just meant to me they're not that interested. So anyway. One of the things that's very clear to me um, is that, you know, we've prioritized our plan based on ridership levels. But the reality is, is that if you are somebody who is um, using a route that isn't as popular as some of the other routes, that route is still just as critical in your life. And one of the things that worries me a lot about the reductions of potentially of the 8, 10, and 11 is that we have the San Remo Clinic, we have a lot of uh, independent um, living communities for seniors. Uh, we have some assisted living residences. And so, you know, those are the things that are on a route that isn't necessarily highly trafficked. And, and those are vulnerable folks that uh, are going to be really impacted by that. So thank you so much for sharing about your experience on the 11. I wanted to say the same thing. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Who else has uh, thoughts that they would like to make sure that uh, 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 we keep in mind as we go through this process? Romeo. Thank you, sir. Um, my name is Romeo von Herman, and uh, I'm also a Green Mountain Transit employee, but on my private time, I'm a city commissioner for the marketplace. And uh, the reason why I'm here is during the last meeting, I spoke about how it will affect, you know, the most vulnerable members of our community who go to uh, the San Remo location, uh, these specific routes that take them there if we do, do discontinue. But today I want to speak to you from another perspective, which is the amount of uh, effect that it will have on colleagues. And if the cuts go through as possibly, let's put the word possibly planned, um, this would have definitely an effect on my colleagues who tirelessly rain, shine, or snow show up to work to make sure that everybody goes to their work, our vulnerable members of the community get their treatment that they need or their hospital they need to go to, and it will be really a sad thing to see if they ever lost the job that they have, and because they also have family to take care of, they have... Oh, of course. Sorry. Um, so I was just speaking to, you know, regarding how this would have an effect on my colleagues because uh, I work at Green Mountain Transit. And um, I, I pray that nobody loses their job over this process that is happening uh, in earnest. So that is just the point that I want to speak to because they have families as well. Um, they work hard tirelessly to make sure that the system runs smoothly and everybody goes to where they need to go every single day, rain, shine, or snow. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Romeo. I want to give uh, Romeo some kudos. Uh, I was at the Transit Center yesterday with uh, one of our legislators who was concerned uh, about um, these reductions. 
And uh, she walked away telling me how uh, incredibly lucky we are to have uh, Romeo at the Transit Center, and I agree. So thank you, uh, Romeo. I have watched Romeo take care of a couple sort of iffy situations on the bus with people getting on at the transit center who were maybe struggling with the rules a little bit. Um, as somebody who has the luxury of taking the bus who doesn't have to, that helps me to feel more comfortable. And I think that that's a big thing for a lot of people. Um, you spoke about having free fares. To me, the situation became a little less dicey when we started charging fares again. So I would love to find a place in the middle somewhere where we are not at the level of chaos that we had. Because we do, unless it's going to be completely public funded, we do have to bring in fares and we do need to be able to attract. I'm really happy seeing um, UVM employees riding the bus on a regular basis because I think they get a stipend from the college. I know I get a stipend from my employer. Um, the more we can attract people who have the option of not taking the bus. If you live in Chicago and you take public transportation, you will get there faster. If you live in Vermont and you take public transportation, you're going to get there slower. So there has to be a trade-off that makes it worthwhile. Thank you so much. And so who else uh, has something that they would like to share with the group? And uh, and so I understand you'll stay off camera and there you go. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather uh, just have the recording. Please, please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, uh, I'm Alec Brown. I was I was uh, at the meeting uh, last week in Burlington on Wednesday, and uh, I just wanted to come here just just to. Uh, to maybe go over things again uh, and ma maybe even put some new ones. But I'm I'm someone who lives in Burlington. I, uh, I'm a person who doesn't drive, uh, so therefore I take the bus as well as Howard Services. I, I, a community worker with me, I don't, I don't have as much as I used to, so I've been taking this bus route for, for the, the Route 1 bus for 10, for 10 months now. And and I mean, I mean, and and therefore I do re definitely rely on it. Um, I'm, I'm someone who also takes the 86 bus to, or 286 to Waterbury to see my dad once a month, and uh, that's where I get, take the Waterbury bus to switch to the RCT bus, the Route 100 commuter, and. Uh, like uh, I I know that a uh, one. I mean, oh, you mean like I know that there's another route that comes after which goes directly to Montpelier. If, if any reductions would be good, maybe have those possibly combined. That's something that can maybe happen. And the as for the as for the airport bus, I I take that bus often because I like to go plane watching with someone. Um. It's it's like it Saturday is when it's a good day to do it for me, and uh, maybe possibly have uh, the airport be part of Route One. Maybe if it were, there were going to be reductions, and another another thing for possibly is is I know that GMT used to do the color system like they do like they do down in Boston, um, like I know how it's like how. I, I like like I, like I know how it's like. Uh, I mean, like two routes are put in the one, which maybe is a way to maybe to have to have reductions and maybe bus riders possibly. That's my thought, and and maybe possibly have GMT have money probably for charity, another way to probably make funds. So. Uh, that's all I got. I hope. I mean, I I hope people see that these uh, meetings could do something about it. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I want to take the advantage to um, uh, provide some good news from today. And so uh, this morning, the Green Mountain uh, Transit Board of Commissioners uh, met at the ungodly hour of 730. I just want to make sure that my boss knows how horrible that meeting time is. and. Um, 
And so uh, at the meeting, uh, they approved articles of incorporation and bylaws to create a GMT affiliated nonprofit organization. And so we are a municipality um, and we're going to work towards having a, a nonprofit arm so that we would increase the number of grants that we would be able to apply for and so that we could do direct fundraising um, uh, as well. And so I just wanted to let you know that since you had mentioned um, uh, fundraising. Who has uh, uh, any other comments that they would like to share? Excellent. <laughs> Uh, my name is Tracy. I'm a bus driver um, at GMT. Just want to do a disclaimer that uh, anything I say here is my opinion and uh, it's not directly influenced or the opinion of the company. Um, I've been at GMT for one year now, um, pretty much to this month. And pretty much if this makes it to phase four, I stand of opportunity of losing my job. A year ago, I lost my job when a company went bankrupt. And I was a trucking company right here in, in Williston. So I came to GMT and uh, was treated really well. And now I'm looking at the possibility in June or July of possibly losing it again with reductions in, in service. Not going to say that that's going to happen. I hope it doesn't but uh, the opportunity is still there for you know to move on and with the shortage of cdl drivers that are out there right now um, once somebody leaves a place if a job comes back the chances of somebody coming back to the same place um, is very small you have got a very small pool of drivers in order to select from and if the reductions in service stay that way it may stay that way because you may not find anybody else to drive. Um, one of the other things um, that I have noticed is say like the Williston runs on Saturdays. We've had full buses going up through. I've had full buses. I've had to decline um, people with accessibility issues because by the time I get to uh, halfway up Main Street, uh, there is no more room on the bus. And all I can do legally is ask if somebody's willing to give up their seat, which happens to be probably 10 to 12 people. And nobody does, because everybody wants a ride to the top of the hill. Um, a solution for that, in my mind, could be a short run that goes from downtown to the U Mall that runs 10 minutes or 15 minutes prior to the number one Williston in order to relieve that way people can have not a crowded bus, but we're still delivering a, a spot on service to, to everybody instead of leaving 15 people behind. It only happens during certain times of the day. Um, and maybe that could be something that could be looked at uh, for future. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have, but I'm hoping that this doesn't reach to, to phase four. I really don't because uh, it'll be a, another job, job hunting expedition, which I'd really rather not go through. Tracy, thank you so much for sharing. Does anyone have a question for a bus driver? Uh, we were to ask. Oh. And so the question was, does the number 10 go all the way to uh, Essex Junction? And the answer is, is that the 10 uh, connects uh, Essex Experience, Amtrak, and Williston. Yep. I'm Gunther von Hoffman. I just moved here about a week ago. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to take the bus, especially during the wintertime and the spring and summer uh, fiestas around Lake Champaign area and maybe do some volunteer work like, uh, I mean, take advantage of the recreational opportunities like uh, the Dragon Ro Rowing Club that they have up there. And, uh, you know, if you get rid of the number 10 bus, what what next? Number one bus gonna, gonna come in? I don't mind walking, but I don't wanna walk during the winter time, time 
And I certainly don't want to walk summer and springtime all the time, too, even though it's only three to six miles of Burlington. It's, I mean, uh, so I'm, I don't want them to eliminate the number 10 because if they get rid of number 10, you know, what next? Number one is going to be next. Uh, and I agree with the, about the congestion. I mean, these roads out here remind me of the California highway country roads. Uh, I, I used to live in Susanville and 395 was just like these roads, uh, just a two lane high, highway. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've been from California and I've seen, you know, roads get pounded all the time. And then you might have to start repairing the roads, but then there's no, a lot of times there's no alternative. So I think it's imperative to try to save the bus, bus lines, especially when you, tr if they're building more, as you can see over there, they're building more house, yes. apartment units. And, and they're, I heard about debates about trying to loosen up the land restrictions, but if you're not going to provide the bus service, then you better not do any more, try to loosen up the land restrictions. Otherwise, you're, you're going to have miniature cr traffic jams all the time he here. Thank you so much. And definitely one of the things that we've heard in these meetings is how important public transit is in addressing the housing crisis, uh, where we need people working um, uh, in the city centers where nobody can afford to live. And uh, and so thank you so much for uh, for having or uh, making your comments. Anything else that people would like to share? Oh. Well, I have a forum. Yes. Can we fix some of the shocks and some of the buses? Oh. <laughs> some of the shocks and some of the buses are brutal. And if we do want to be attractive to people who have the luxury of not riding the bus, it would be nice if I didn't feel like my feelings were going to come out on some of those Burlington streets. Like I ride those same streets in my car and they are not as rattly. <laughs> you know, I, I, I uh, have joked at these meetings that our, our buses are more like uh, ships and boats than they are uh, uh, cars. And, um, and so I think that that's another area. Um, I think that uh, we have the Division of uh, Public Works um, uh, director uh, for Burlington on the GMT Board of Commissioners, and so I will let him know that he needs to get to work so on fixing those. <laughs> That's true. So that is true. Well, yes. Yes. What What other things uh, uh, do we need to keep in mind as we go through this process? Oh, here we go. Well, there's a uh, there's a chain store called uh, Fleet Street Shoes, and they're nationwide. But the closest one near me is Essex Junction, so I need the bus to go there all the time because I have to replace my shoes all the time due to the conditions of my feet and. Yeah, I'm a little surprised there's, the buses don't go beyond the city limits, you know, go like past the police station and town hall. I think there should be more extended buses, too, so that way you don't see all these cars coming into the ci city as well, too. too. I'll take it. Oh, thank you, Ryan. Yep. Um, so as Clayton mentioned, I'm Ryan Wallace. Um, you know, I'm with the Teamsters Union. Um, and I'm a field rep for them. We not only represent the bus drivers at GMT, but we also represent the mechanics, the ones who fix the buses. So um, certainly some good notes there. Um, but I think it's important to mention that the impact of any root cut could truly be you know, detrimental to the livelihood of ultimately um, everybody in our community. Um, you know, you have folks who take, take the bus to go to work. Um, they're working toward, you know, the emissions uh, kind of plan that Vermont has set, set forth. Um, and then you have the other folks who, you know, take the bus to get to appointments and, and so on and so forth. Um, root cuts for us as Teamsters, it means, you know, guys like Tracy, um, obviously he's been through this once before. Um, we, we certainly don't want to put him through it again. Um, but 
people are going to have to get laid off, you know, if, if cuts are put into place. Um, and that's, it's a scary thing to think about. Um, and the mindset of, you know, cut this route versus the other route due to uh, ridership levels. It's a really tough idea for me to wrap my head around as all routes play, you know, such a critical role um, in everybody's day-to-day -day life um, and just for everyday transportation. Um, not one route is more important than the other. Um, and I just, you know, I, I want to make sure that that's stressed to the board. Um, everybody's, everybody's route is important um, for whatever reason, you know, they, they take the bus for, um, I had mentioned Vermont's goal for, you know, emissions for 2025 and kind of their push for that, um, to get to that 26% threshold. The state's been making some pretty good movement, especially with the EV incentives they've had in the last couple of years. Um, which brings us to this point, you know, cutting public transportation is really just a, a catastrophic step in the wrong direction. Um, the service plan, you know, put forth today, the draft that was put together, um, an estimated 750 rides impacted within the, within the next six months. Um, it's a lot to think about. That's a lot of extra cars on the road. Um, you know, not everybody can afford a vehicle. Um, average cost to maintain a vehicle for a 12 month period is about nine grand. And, uh, people don't just have that laying around, especially with the cost of housing these days, um, so you think about more cars on the road every day, you know, people going to and from work to the store, so on and so forth. Um, but also the folks that rely on transportation to get to their, you know, employment. Um, we're talking about bus drivers like Tracy, you know, could be potentially losing his job, but also the guys who, who ride the bus to get to work every day. Their house is on the bus line for a reason, because that's their, that's their way to get to work. Um, so, I strongly want to encourage, you know, the folks here at the meeting tonight um, to reach out to your legislators. Um, you know, you, you took the time to come here tonight to, to voice to the board. Um, but this, you know, this situation that we're in with the funding shortage, um, it must be prevented. Sure, the funds may not be in the transportation budget for the state of Vermont, but it's an $8.6 million, $8.6 billion budget that the state has. Um, and when it's affecting, you know, people getting to their mental health treatment, um, to their, um, you know, appointments, so on and so forth. It's, it's much, much bigger than transportation. So um, that's, uh, that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, we'll come back in just a second. I saw on the news today um, about uh, the state's efforts when it comes to uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions with keeping your ho house more efficient. Uh, and they talk about potentially have, having the state spend billions of dollars to make our homes more efficient. It makes me think about uh, what you just said there and uh, finding just a few million uh, so that the number one uh, source of, uh, uh, of climate change uh, emissions, which is still transit, um, uh, and not, not our transit, but uh, uh, cars, um, you know, that seems like uh, uh, worthy of investment as well. Well, to ride on what he he said, uh, uh, you know, you got. Well, I forgot what you were saying about. Uh, well, I mean, I, from time to time, I see fire engines coming this way all the time, and it don't mean much when the roads are clogged and they can't get through because uh, too many cars in and not enough buses on on the road. Yeah, I mean in Holland. Uh, they have wide uh, bicycle trails, so the fire department can go veer off and use those bicycle trails to get where they're going to. But here, we don't have that kind of thing. I wish we did. Uh, uh, let's see, you know, what else? Uh, if your comment comes back to you, we can, we can um, back around. Well, I mean, you also have a lot of, you're dealing with drug addiction and, uh, in uh, Burlington, and the cops are complaining about all the crimes they have to deal with because of the drug addiction, overdosing. How do you expect these people to, you know, go to their appointments and deal with their addictions if they to cut cut out? I mean, I don't see the police department doing it. Is the police supporting the uh, going to throw their support behind trying to prevent these cuts or not? I mean, they should think about that. I mean, I hate to say it, but cops are don't look at the bigger picture all the time in other aspects of the communi community. 
I think that you make a great point, uh, which is that we need to think beyond just uh, transportation and transit. And one of the things that we're doing um, with GMT to address this is that we're making sure that it's not just going to be the transportation committee uh, legislators that hear about this. We want to make sure that the health and human services uh, committees, you know, know about this because of uh, the impact. We want to make sure that the public safety committees know about this because of the impact. Um, and so uh, absolutely working to have a broader, um, you know, coalition of perspectives on this, I think is going to be critical. Hi, um, I'm Amy Brewer. I'm um, the chair of the Board of Commissioners. I do live here in Williston, um, and I'm happy. This is the first public meeting that I've been able to attend. Um, and it's really, I'm grateful um, to hear all the various perspectives that you've shared. And I want to say, I take it all really, really seriously. I'm, I'm volunteering to be on that board because I believe that everybody um, should have access to transit um, for any reason they want um, to help with climate goals or to get to your medical appointments to get to work. I like to take my daughter um, down uh, to Church Street on Saturday to go shopping and that's a really fun way for us to do it. Um, we've had a good time doing that. Um, so I think everybody should have that and that's why I'm on the board. Um, and I, I just want to say a couple things. Um, one, uh, there's still room for everybody to to ride the bus, right? So um, the board is doing what we can in GMT and its employees are all doing what we can, but um, you invite your partners and friends and neighbors to join you on the bus. It, riding the bus can be intimidating sometimes. So if they have someone to kind of show them the ropes and, and see how to ride it, it's a really great way to do that. Um, so invite others to go on an adventure with you. I wouldn't be a bus rider if someone hadn't done that for me. Um, and um, not only do we want you to talk to your legislators about how important it is, but we want you to um, talk to a greater network. Maybe there's a stone that we've not been able to turn yet, whether it's um, a, an employer who also wants to provide incentives. Um, so please help us get the word out because it's vital for you and it's vital for us. Um, and if we can do that together, perhaps we can have a greater impact um, than what employees and, and board are able to do. So I appreciate your being here um, and your voice can, can be really important um, now and, and in the future. Thank you so much, Amy. I just remember what, what I was gonna say. Uh, studies have shown that people will take the bus uh, bus or any kind of public transportation if it's in one mile of their residency but if it's going to be farther away than that then they're not going to do it and i think the businesses ought to get on board too about it i mean they're always talking about trying to reduce a uh, turnover but they can't do it can't do it if they're going to keep uh if they're not going to throw the support behind it but i also think they ought to you know try to make steady work schedules for their employees. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard for people to catch the bus if they're all of a sudden, uh, you know, their work schedules change all of a sudden. Right? You can't have a lot of buses if uh, people don't know when they'll be able to go home and catch the bu bus. Thank you. Ah, excellent. Well, I, I don't take the bus, but um, I'm here with Alec, who does, and um, I know it's very important to him. And um, I'm glad to hear the GMT is thinking about uh, the most vulnerable of our population, and um, I hope you don't um, limit that to just people going to treatment centers, because there are a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of people living in the community who, who need to take the bus. Um, and I would like to see the board uh, lobbying for more buses. <laughs> and one of the reasons that we moved to Vermont was because it is, there's such a good social uh, network here. <clears throat> and uh, so anyway, that's my two cents. Thanks. Thank you so much. Romeo. Thank you. Um, this also has an impact on businesses and visitors that come to the city. And I sit on the uh, Marketplace Commission, and I think uh, 
they'll be very much interested in the impact that this is going to have. Oh, sorry. The impact that this is going to have. I sit on the Marketplace Commission and we often discuss on how business is doing and what is happening in downtown, uh, especially the Marketplace. And the buses do go through the marketplace, but also bring folks to the marketplace as well. So having to cut services will have some sort of impact on visitors coming from abroad, especially Canada, and just, you know, Burlingtonians living out here who want to shop and play and live out here as well. So it'll be great to have, you know, somebody from GMT to come to the Marketplace Commission, maybe uh, the upcoming meeting and the meeting after, just to kind of let them know this may or may not be the impact that it's going to have on what the sales is going to look like down the line and you know in burlington so on and so forth so economic impact as it were so i thought i might just share that thank you thank you yeah, romeo i'd be very happy to talk to the commission yes, sir. I, have, yeah. I have one more comment because i have a lot of things to say so i just want to go back to your comments um the state has had a lot of incentives to switch over to evs but i think in the long run a more carb we need to reduce the car-based centric nature of Vermont. I mean, I think that's something that is kind of finally starting to bubble through nationwide, that having a car-based society isn't good for all the people inside it. it. It drops a lot of people off the edges who can't afford a car, who can't have a car for medical reasons. Um, so EVs are not the answer. It it doesn't reduce all of our footprint. The the pollution off the tires on EVs is just as bad as the pollution off of combustion engines. Buses are the way to do it. And I don't think that we can expand routes until we fill the routes we have. But again, I, we have to figure out how to make the routes we have more appealing and fill those buses. Thank you. One of the... That's That's true. <laughs> One of the things that I really appreciate about these uh, meetings is is the enthusiasm that the people uh, who are, have been coming in have for transit, and so I I, re I really appreciate the uh, the notion of uh, for finding a, a pathway forward through you know filling the buses and uh, becoming even more and more um, uh, uh, part of the the community. So I I feel like we're oh. Not me. Ryan was pointing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jimmy, you don't want to say anything? You know, once I, you get me started, I can't stop. So. Well, to piggyback on what this gentleman said, I think you, I think you and him ought to get together and do an economic impact on how much revenue the Burlington's going to lose, since it depends upon heavily on, on uh, you know, tourism all the time and from the local people. So you ought to do a report report something on on that that thing uh when when the guards to the various fiesta events and like i said the boat dragon race event and then the win winter stuff so yeah you, you gotta get the you gotta get the local chamber of commerce and the u.s chamber of commerce on board with this stuff i mean i hate to say this but business people don't look at the don't look beyond their spirits or like cops they just don't look they don't look beyond uh, their confined uh, bubble thank you much i will say that one of the things that uh, gmt was very lucky in is that uh, the our chairperson uh, before amy uh, actually uh, works for the local chamber and uh, and i think that it was critical uh, having that connection to uh, the business uh, uh, community um because uh, absolutely they um uh, are an ally so i i feel like you know we're we're maybe you know getting to the point where we're coming to a close and um uh what i want to do um is make sure that everybody um who's here with gmt um uh, gets recognized uh we we've done that for some of the folks uh like romeo our uh the uh supervisor of the downtown transit uh, Center. Uh, thank you, Romeo, for your service. Chris Damiani, who is our director of planning and um, is the person that is uh, looking at all the data uh, that we will be uh, making our, our building our plans from. Uh, Jimmy Johnson is our uh, operations manager for our urban area. 
And uh, if there's one person uh, responsible for keeping our urban buses uh, uh, on time and in the right spot, it's Jimmy. And I appreciate all that you do for us, Jimmy. And um, I think that I got all of us. And so um, thank you so much. I, st I started by thank. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what are the, the techniques or the, the different types of initiatives that Green Mountain Transit or any transit on, on the planet have tried? Mm -hmm. So we heard about price reduction. Mm -hmm. We talked about um, people basically introducing their family members and their neighbors. Mm -hmm. So what other, uh, is there anything else that Green Mountain Transit or anyone can do to encourage people to take a bus instead of driving a car? Well, you know, one of the things that um, I think that GMT um, needs to do more uh, of, and I will say that this is going to be difficult during a time when we have uh, financial scarcity, but I think that we have not done um, a good job of telling the story. We have not done um, a good job of letting community members know um, how the transit system works, how it can benefit their life. Um, I think that we've sort of taken the approach uh, that people who uh, need public transit will come and find us. And, you know, by and large, I think that's the case. Um, but that uh, leaves behind uh, the other members of our community who support that we're going to need, um, both through their potential ridership and through their um, uh, paying their taxes, um, uh, in order for us to be successful. Because I think that until... Uh, the the people in the greater Burlington area um, have a, a positive association with GMT in their head so that like any time they think about GMT funding, they're like, oh, this is an organization that provides value to everybody here, not just our riders. I think that until we do that, we're, we're going to struggle with funding. Okay. And so I think that um, uh, we should probably start wrapping things up. Um, started with thanking you all for being here, and I want to end with a thank you for being here. Um, as we've had with our other sessions, there was a lot of great ideas that came forward. And I can tell you that as we're putting the plan together, uh, both the plan as far as what um, uh, our service needs to look like, but our argument to uh, decision makers about why an investment in GMT is a, is a smart investment uh, that provides a good return uh, to them, uh, you know, the, the things that were brought up here are going to be critical uh, for us because one of the things that I love about Vermont is that we're still human scale. And uh, I love the fact that you can go to the state house, um, you can walk right in, you can sit in a committee, and you can tell your story. And I have seen legislators swayed by the stories of real individual people. And, uh, and so that's why I think that these are going to be powerful, because I know that when we gather these together and we put the quotes, because that will be right on the top of our legislative report, all of these different quotes from the people who say, I bought my house uh, because it was on the number 11, or now that I'm going to have to move, why would I stay in Vermont? You know, things like that that we've heard at these meetings, uh, I think that's going to resonate uh, with the decision makers. So, so thank you for giving us ammunition. Thank you for taking the time on a beautiful day to come out. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we had soda and, and, and festivities. This was the, the most uh, festive of our meetings. Um, and uh, we're always looking for new places to meet, and this is our first time here. And uh, um, uh, I have mixed, fe <laughs> mixed feelings about it, to be quite honest, but, uh, but it seemed to work out okay. So thank you for being here, everybody. Have a safe trip home, and uh, uh, thank you again.